Have you ever seen those movies where the bloke's there driving his car, talking on his phone, and then a police chase is happening? Police woman comes and says, give me your phone, give me your car right now. That's what we'll be discussing today. Okay, maybe not that exactly, but something related to that. We are talking about the legislative power that the Commonwealth has to acquire your property. Hello everyone. My name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today we will talk about section 5131 of the Australian Constitution, the power with respect to the acquisition of property on just terms. Section 5131 of the Australian Constitution says that the Commonwealth Parliament has the power to make laws with respect to the acquisition of property on just terms from any state or person for any purpose in respect of which the Parliament has power to make laws. Did I read it correctly? Does that say that the Commonwealth Parliament can make a law and acquire my property as long as it pays a fair compensation? But I thought this video was about rights. You said we were going to talk about the express rights of the Australian Constitution. I did. But before you get scared, let's look at what are all of these means. What are the elements and the limits in that provision? There are generally two elements here. If you pay attention, it says that the Commonwealth Parliament has the power to make laws for the acquisition of property, but there's also a limitation in that provision. The power is limited in two ways. The acquisition must be on just terms. And the acquisition must be for the purposes in respect of which Parliament has the power to make laws. These two limits then work as what we call negative rights. They are limitations on the power that is given to the Commonwealth Parliament to make laws. We talked about this in our previous video. You can watch that by clicking on the top right corner or just subscribe to our channel and make sure that you never miss any of our videos anymore. Section 5131 then, the express right, has two dimensions. It works as a power for the acquisition of property, but it also works as a limit on that acquisition because the acquisition can only be on just terms. Look at what Justice Dixon said about this double purpose of the constitutional provision. Section 5131 provides the Commonwealth Parliament with a legislative power of acquiring property. At the same time as a condition upon the exercise of the power it provides the individual or the state affected with a protection against governmental interferences with his proprietary rights without just recompense. So yeah, we are here talking about the express right of receiving a fair and full indemnification for the stripping of your property. But so that we can understand this provision better, let's look in detail to these two elements. Let's look at the power and at the limits on the power in section 5131. Let's start with the idea of the acquisition of property. First thing that you need to understand is that this is not about a negotiation between the Commonwealth and a person or a state. There's no contract, there's no previous agreement here. The section refers to a compulsory acquisition of someone's property. And to acquire here means not only to buy permanently, but also refers to a temporary or indefinite use of the property. So for the acquisition to exist, there must be a proprietary interest with benefit or advantage for the Commonwealth. As Justice Dean stated in the Tasmanian Dam case, Laws which merely prohibit or control a particular use of or particular acts upon property plainly do not constitute an acquisition of property for the purposes of the Commonwealth. The mere extinguishment or deprivation of rights in relation to property does not involve acquisition. Property means anything with private interests attached to it. Property will range from the tangible to the intangible. That's why sometimes we use the term choses or choses in action. This is a French word that means things. But in the common law tradition, this expresses the intangible rights of property. So property involves this bundle of rights that one has to enforce their dominion over a thing. Property then extends to every species of valuable rights and interests, including real and personal property. 
The text of section 5131 also says that it is possible for the Commonwealth to acquire property from states and persons. We understand then that it is okay for the Commonwealth to acquire property on just terms from the states. And persons here is a really good choice of words because it not only encompasses natural people but also corporations. And as we know, the Commonwealth Parliament has the power to legislate about corporations, don't we? The second element of section 5131 says that the acquisition of property must be on just terms. This has been seen as an express right. In the banking case of 1948, the High Court of Australia has said that this provision expresses the right against an acquisition of property other than on just terms. And in 1984, the High Court of Australia said that this provision includes a constitutional guarantee of just terms. All in all, what it means is that since the Commonwealth has the power to acquire your property, at least you have the right that that property will be acquired on just terms according to a fair compensation. So the Commonwealth law will be invalid if it acquires your property without giving you any compensation. What are just terms then? Well, it involves not only a fair monetary compensation for the acquisition, but also the application of the principles of natural justice in assessing the amount of that compensation. You see, it's not only about the money. The provision does not say a fair monetary compensation, it says just terms. This implies that a standard of fairness must be applied in the process as a whole and not only on the amount that is to be given to you. But you may still say, That didn't really help. I still don't get what justice terms really are. Well, there is a certain hesitancy in defining the exact contours of just terms. As Lumben Moen said, the courts are faced with great difficulties in deciding what just terms or fair compensation are in a particular case. The usual way to assess these just terms is through defining the market value of the property. But depending on the circumstances, that's not enough. And so other standards can also be used to assess the fair price. And in terms of who decides what the price will be, usually an independent tribunal or independent board will decide on the fair amount. This is because the minister or a non-independent agency would probably not give you a just compensation for the property that they acquired. Having an independent tribunal can guarantee that the interests of the whole community and also the principles of natural justice are secured. Just terms then is about considering what are the circumstances of the case and observing whether the Commonwealth is securing the principles of natural justice and also paying you a fair amount, a fair compensation for the property that they acquired. As Justice Dixon said in Elungalu, just terms appears to refer to what is fair and just between the community and the owner of the thing taken. Now, you may be wondering if this is really a human right. Should we really consider this as an express right in the Australian Constitution? I get it, but let me tell you this. This provision exists basically to guarantee that you would receive a fair compensation for the acquisition of your property. You see, during the drafting of the constitution, there were a lot of debates whether this was really necessary to be put expressly in the constitution, because some assumed that this power to acquire property was already in the incidental power in section 51. We have a video about the incidental power of section 5139, make sure to watch that video as well. However, instead of gambling to see what would turn out, the framers decided to include the provision of section 5131 to guarantee not only that the Commonwealth would have the power to acquire property, but especially to make sure that that acquisition would be on just terms. Section 5131 exists today then as a right to make sure that when the Commonwealth expropriates something, it will not only follow a fair process, but also pay a fair price for it. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the Commonwealth can only acquire property for particular purposes. And this works as another limit on what the Commonwealth Parliament can legislate in respect to the acquisition of property. The Commonwealth can only acquire property to carry out executive functions which, under the Constitution, are associated with the head of legislative power. 
This was our first video about the express rights of the Australian Constitution. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon. Until then, ciao.